Hello, everybody. This is the founder of Hustlecraft. My name is Alexandria Ott, and I am honored and so excited <laughs> to have Lene from Libra Moonstone here today with us as we explore um, so many different things. Uh, the reason that I chose Lene, which I'll allow you to introduce yourself in just a moment, but I want to explain why I wanted to speak with you today. Um, you know, there's so much that has happened over the last centuries, four years, one year, you know, there's, there, there's so much heaviness that, that our entire world is feeling, but particularly in the United States. And I really felt as though for this next series, it was, I was very called to um, give people tools to better understand themselves. Because at this point, I think we've been pushed to the brink on every level. And I think we're seeing that result in some really negative things. And I wanted to provide some type of tool to go within. Um, it's a journey that I've recently started again. And I kind of always thought I was going within because I'm a Pisces and I'm very in tune with myself. Um, but it's a lot more work than I think people know, but it's so rewarding. And so when looking for different different people that studied and were experts in different tools, I was really looking for super different people who all happen to be women as I searched. Um, and when I come, came across Lene's page, it said metaphysical geologist. It also said litho mancer, which I had to look up and I love, um, and content creator, which I value and love your content so much. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what that even means? Yeah, thank you so much. First of all, that was such a nice introduction. Um, I am Lene. I have so many titles just because I do so many things. I realized that if people ask me what I do, it's totally fine for me to list off four different things because why not explore as much as you can? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I am a metaphysical geologist. So that basically entails, I do understand the scientific and as it says, geological aspects of stones. So, um, but I do also incorporate the metaphysical aspects. So I explain how different crystal systems can heal us on a spiritual level. Um, I talk about how um, you can incorporate them in different crystal grids and how the shapes and how you shift them changes the effects. So I think it's really important to incorporate, um, you know, kind of the base and the source of stones as well as, you know, how they can help you on a physical and a metaphysical level. Um, and then as for lithomancy, um, that means crystal reading. So I did start out reading um, with just like oracle cards with stones. And then I learned how to use my flower of life grid to actually cast stones and read them that way. Um, that's probably my second or my first favorite form of divination. I also really love reading like playing cards. But um, yeah, so crystal reading is basically casting the stones onto some form of grid that you have or you make. Um, I base it off of the placements of like a Bagua map and that's how you associate it with the different aspects of your life. So it's really detailed and it's really interesting how you um, combine the different meanings of different stones and how they are associated with different aspects. And then um, as a content creator, it's great because I get to combine all of those things into one. I get to explain all of these things with pretty graphics yeah. and I get to um, you know, be on social media. So I love to make um, TikTok videos. I make Twitter threads. I do, you know, my Instagram posts and I try to do a morning message and, um, in, you know, I do my morning affirmations. So um, yeah, it's just kind of combining a lot of, not everything in my practice because some things are meant to be private, right. but um, a lot of my spiritual practice just into one space or I guess you know social media a few spaces <laughs> yeah absolutely and what I find so interesting is that you've educated yourself which I want to learn more about sort of like where that took place and how that started but also that you've been able to not just turn it into something that you do for others say one-on-one -on -one, you know as, as mm -hmm. a way to read people but then to actually interpret that into educational tools and make them um, 
consumable on social media because what you're what you're studying and what you're teaching and what you're you know what your power lies in is it's very complex it's simple in a sense but it's very complex so for the fact that you've been able to sort of in my opinion master the ability to learn this entire thing and i'm sure you're a lifelong student as we all are and yes. then perform it or not perform it but but you know put the act on you know act do the act of reading and then to transfer that into an educational piece of content that's also digestible is a feat unto itself because um, there's um, so much when it comes to designing and content creation and laying out and you know the imagery and the way the imagery is set out is is so challenging it's what we talked about on our first call that i can see just as much the time that you've spent on creating the content to educate your followers as i'm sure it is for you to learn and execute the work without being on the internet so um tell us a little bit about how you got started in this field and sort of where you've picked up these learnings yeah definitely um so it does go back pretty far, I would say. Um, I'm 24 now, turning 25 this year. Um, it's been a great first house perfection year, despite the pandemic, I will say. But um, <laughs> there is um, a shop that my dad used to go to to get his incense at, and I still go there for like my stones, and I went last week, um, safely, of course. Um, but yeah, he would go there to get his incense and I noticed the stones and I was like, this is, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. But then also, um, the community college right by there, my mom used to go there and she was taking geology classes for a minute and some nights things would just, you know, happen and she would end up taking me with her and I would bring like a little notebook and I would take notes and like, I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't understanding everything that they were saying. It was a college geology class, but, you know, I was like, oh, okay, we have the rocks. Ooh, we're passing around rocks. Like, let's, let's do this. You know, um, I would say um, like seven, wow. eight, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then I ended up joining like the science club at my elementary school and we started learning about like igneous and metamorphic and sedimentary, like all the different stages and everything. And I was like, this is just great. And I kind of just, um, it wasn't like a main focus for me for a while, but it was always something that was like, oh, this is really cool. I understand this, blah, blah, blah. My, um, stepmom actually gave me this jade bracelet when I was 13 and I haven't taken it off. You're not supposed to take it off. So okay. that also like reintroduced things to me again. Mm -hmm. And then um, a few years ago, I just kind of, I don't want to say I had an, <laughs> an awakening, but I definitely had a moment of clarity where I knew I needed to make a sh like changes in my life yeah. and I needed to, um, find that strength within myself because I noticed that I was looking for um, happiness and you know strength and all of these things and other people or other things and then I was left feeling empty so I'd say around like 21 was when I started to learn more about myself and that's when I started to better get connected with the stones, like I, I knew there was a lot to be explored, a lot more to be explored. Um, I did not know it would get this far. I did not know I would end up being a metaphysical geologist and a lithominster. Um, but yeah, and then I've taken, you know, some online classes here and there. Um, <laughs> I have a ninth house Libra moon. So just staying in school is just, it's difficult. Um, I do what I can. But yeah, so doing just like online classes, a few, you know, in, in classroom classes and things like that, just to better understand the geological aspect of it. And then um, the metaphysical was definitely a lot of, a lot of like books. Mm -hmm. The geological aspect of course was too, but metaphysical was definitely a lot of books. There's not a lot of like classes you can take that. Right. Um, Is there you one know? book that stands out to you that's sort of like really either captured you or sort of spun you into a whole new realm of learning or understanding? 
Yeah, I think um, one of my first ones, actually, the Crystal Bible by Judy Hall. Mm -hmm. That book was like, like the way that she lays out everything and the way that I was able to better understand like, okay, like this can help my, like this stone can help my mind. It can help my body and it can help my spirit. Like there's so many different things that can be utilized. I really like that they all encompass just like almost everything that you need. Yeah. Um, but like, I still reference that one. Like sometimes yeah. I forget things or I'm like, I have a stone and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what is your name? And I, I go, I check the book. I'm like, oh yes, like my savior, you know? Yeah. So it's nice to have that. <laughs> Great. That's amazing. And that's what I love about spirituality is, you know, it's, it's uh, an ongoing practice that can be learned within reading, seeing, like it's not just a one path. And I think that's why people get overwhelmed sometimes in the beginning at the prospect of spirituality or the desire for it, because it's not like traditional religion where there is a place you go, a person you listen to and one book that you read. Um, and, and that's what I love about it is that it, it empowers the individual to find their journey. And so much of this series will be about offering people watching these various practices to understand what's best for them. So what does this practice look like maybe as a starter and how can one sort of deepen their practice when it comes to, to what you're doing? Like, what is your hope for the people that are watching that they're doing at home? Yeah, I think that you need to do as much reading as possible and take everything with a grain of salt at the beginning. I feel like I definitely learned a lot. I definitely retained a lot at the beginning, but then I got to a point where it was like, okay, I'm consuming, I'm consuming, I'm consuming, but what am I like, where is the discernment? What do I really feel like I'm connecting with? What do I feel like not necessarily isn't true, but just doesn't resonate with my spirit. You know, it gets to a point where it is exciting. It is interesting because spirituality always comes back to ourself you're learning about yourself you're healing yourself so of course it's interesting to learn these different things about yourself and re-educate yourself about things that you didn't necessarily know before or you kind of put it on the back burner so it can get a little overwhelming to continue to consume and consume and consume so just taking your time um yeah reading what you can because like social media is fantastic. It's great. But I do see a lot of things like on the TikTok platform, especially that are just like, like there needs to be an ABC before we get to D, you know? And a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't understand that, that you need to do the shadow work and the protection before you do certain things because people just kind of, <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. Oh, oh my geez. God, this has been so bad this changing weather. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> bless. Bless. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, we're back. We're back. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I feel like, again, yeah. Describe it's what those steps were first, just quickly, because I know we could probably go into an entire series about what you were just talking about, but the shadow. Oh, yeah. Like, like step I just, one, two, and three before four. What is that? Yeah, I feel like the thing about one thing that really captivates people about spirituality is like when you do rituals and things, a lot of them are like, okay, this is how you manifest money and you're going to get money. So people are like, okay, yes, like let's do it. Great, fantastic. Right. Which is you, the great, that's fine. But before you do that, what is your relationship with money like? Yeah. Like, are you, do you feel like secure in how you manage money, how you give and receive money? Because if you're coming from a place of lack and you're trying to, you know, bring $4,000 into your realm, you know, it's, there's going to be a disconnect, you know? Yeah. So I feel like always mending, making sure you have a healthy relationship with whatever it is that you're trying to um, cultivate or maintain 
You know, if you're trying to manifest a relationship or something like that, what's your relationship like with yourself? Do you like yourself? Do you treat yourself with respect? What yeah. do you like in relationships? Are you ready for a relationship? Yeah. Um, and then, um, Is that just, what you know, you consider protection. shadow work? Um, see, yes, I do. That's definitely, cons- yeah, that's definitely what I would consider shadow work because you definitely have to have an awareness and not even just an awareness, but the determination to to fix or mend those things, because it's so easy to say, and I did this for a very long time. It's so easy to say like, this is something that's not so great about me or something that can be fixed. And then you say, oh, well, you know, it's been like this for, you know, however long, like if if I really needed to change, if it was really a problem, things would be worse, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, that's a coping mechanism. You're like, oh, it could be worse. Like, no, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think, um, yeah, just allowing yourself to do that work, to have the awareness um, to mend your relationship with those things. And then also when you are doing rituals and things like that, like you always just want to make sure that you are grounded and protected because what does that mean if for somebody doesn't really know yeah. what that means? Yeah. Um, when I say that, I mean, like being, it's so easy, especially right now with everything just still happening to have your head kind of up in the clouds and mm-hmm. it's easy to get lost in what someone else is saying or what a certain practice is saying or something like that. Mm-hmm. So just always making sure that you are present with yourself Mm -hmm. um yeah I just think it's so easy to get kind of like lost in the clouds and kind of like okay I'll listen to this and yeah I'm doing this and oh now I have this routine of me doing this but like what are you really doing you know like what are you really doing for yourself how what progress are you seeing like what is the purpose of you starting this out right and then when I say protection um I mean that in like a more so a spiritual sense. I just like to make sure like I'm spiritually protected when I do certain rituals or certain things. And when I do that, you know, I just, it's, you can keep it very simple. You don't have to do a whole um, circus act to stay protected. I like to, you know, vocalize vocally, just speak out to the universe like thank you for guiding guarding me protecting me you know I have certain stones I'll keep a selenite one and some tourmaline with me I'll do an incense cleanse you know things like that um so yeah just making sure you're present and present protected and you know happy with what we're trying to obtain how you have a healthy relationship with what's trying to be obtained (laughs) Because I think I can see where you're going with this in a sense is a lot of people will dive into signing up for these like big mega retreats or these big sort of commercialized spirituality, which was like everything I wanted to make sure that we didn't find here. Um, Mm -hmm. But what's hard is that when something's commercialized like that, it's become a business. But what's good about that is it's easier for people to understand because when you are a business, you have you know, guidebooks, websites, to-do lists, you know, you have materials that people as humans who want to like grasp the full picture, we're, we're controlling, right? We're, we have to have control. The only way we don't Absolutely. is to really do this work, right? So if you haven't done this work, uh-huh. speaking to do this work, you yeah. are like, desperately trying to like know what steps A, B, C, and D are, especially just mm-hmm. with how unknown everything has been. Um, if there's one thing we can know, it's that maybe we want to pursue a spiritual journey, but we want to know how, and we want to know all the steps. And that's what I find so fascinating about this is there isn't a book, there isn't a church, there isn't a to-do list or a checklist. And so it's, it's learning to trust yourself, to ground yourself, to, um, to keep yourself safe in a place that you can continue to trust yourself and trust that maybe this path and this journey is next for you, but that you're grounded in it and you're not just checking the boxes. Um, and, and I find that so fascinating because I think people want it. They want the outcome so badly, but the actual work, I think mm-hmm. long, I would talk about meditation or my therapist would say, yeah. you spend some time meditating and I'd go, sure. 
And until I actually did it, which for people who are already spiritual, they know this, but for people who are watching who are like, yeah, yeah. But like, you actually have to do it. You know, it's, it's so interesting <laughs> how many people talk about it, but they don't do it. Like maybe they have their whole house filled with stones, for example, mm -hmm. but they aren't like really sort of like understanding the meaning, reading more about them, utilizing them, or like really invoking what it is that they are brought to have. They just want to be the person that checks the box that there are these minerals in their home. And that's fine. But um, I'm fascinated with the idea of like, doing the work because it it's actually all of it and nobody really seems like i feel like that's a big block is actually just doing the work of like sitting down 10 minutes turning it on being quiet and just meditating and how much we kind of don't let ourselves have that but we trick ourselves into thinking well i'm spiritual or i i take breaks or i go for a walk which is great but like it's deeper you know and so i just find that fascinating because i just started really meditating and the shift even within like three weeks of doing it has been like profound the voices uh the narrative in my head of something negative and how it floats away and things like that so i just find like spirituality and daily practice is something that i'd love to talk to you about because it's 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 how it is, you know? And I think that's important is for people to sort of understand what it looks like in a daily practice. Did that just make sense or did I just ramble? <laughs> Are you there? Oh, hold on, you just cut out. Oh. You're frozen. Oh no. Can you see me moving? Yes. Okay. Um. It doesn't say recording. Oh, it doesn't? Oh, is it recording? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, but I think it's um, so interesting that you say like the commercial aspect of it, because I think it is like the way that it's marketed is very like, you know, grab these things and, you know, think positively and, oh my gosh, everything is going to change. Just everything is going to be perfect, you know? And like, which is so harmful because when people first get into it and they try to meditate for the first time and they can't sit still for five minutes and they say, wait, like what's, well, I have the amethyst, I have the rose quartz, like, why do I still not like myself? Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's so interesting how, like, I, I have been seeing it more, but the, I guess the shadow parts of spirituality just aren't as spoken about um i think because it has been like commercialized in a way a lot of people try to keep up with that okay it's all positivity it's all love it's all light because a lot of people like to see that a lot of people who are feeling down about themselves who feel like they can't get a job who feel like you know they can't be in a happy relationship when you see a group of people who just seem to be happy after buying you know a rock like you're going to be like, okay, wait, let me try this, you know, and you're going to be disappointed when you get the rock and you're like, okay, what, what do we do now? No job. Um, plan. Here's my rock. What's happening? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Where is my salary? Like, no, that's not how it works. Um, it'd be great. That'd be great. Right. That'd be fantastic, but it's not. Um, so I think it is interesting that yes, it is part of you know, it is fun to have these tools, you know, not just the stones, but the cards and looking at, you know, the transits and all of these things. It is fun. It's exciting, but you have to create that balance. We can't have the light without the dark. We have to have that understanding because even in just, you know, the most mundane understanding, you have emotions like happiness and sadness how are you solely going to acknowledge one of those emotions and push one off to the side you just that's just not a healthy way to go about that you can do that for a period of time but it's going to blow up in some way right well and also um, on that denying one part of yourself is not ever going to get you to the root of who you are because you're taking exactly. the path of one side and you can't forget mm -hmm. the path of the other so how can you ever really sort of sink in if you're only taking, right. you know, one side of, of the path, if you will. Right. You're cutting out just the parts that are pretty and trying to make this collage and it's not adding up. 
Yeah. So, um, but yeah, just finding that balance. Like I, I love to, um, I feel like something that's fun that I do is every day I make a different satchel with like stones and herbs and then just different things that are important to me. And I um, keep it with me throughout the day just to invoke that energy and just keep myself protected, um, which is great. And I showcase that on my Instagram and that's wonderful. I also make sure like on Mondays, I like to do shadow work. I like to sit with myself. I like to either come up with a journal prompt or sometimes just reflect on my week. Shadow work doesn't necessarily have to be every time like, okay, let's address this childhood trauma. Right. It doesn't have to be that way every right. time. A lot of the times because you're, you know, you're leading yourself into that heavy work, something like that may come up. I more often than not, I'll start out with just a, okay, let me think about what went on my, what went on in my week, you know? And then I think about, oh, wait, actually, I may have had a, a disagreement with somebody. I talk about how that made me feel. And then suddenly I'm thinking about how that cycle was repeated five years ago with the same person, but the different argument, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting how you can go into it, not necessarily even being like, okay, we're going to dive deep right now. Yeah. But yeah. just giving yourself that space to kind of express yourself and talk about how you feel. Like you can start out slow. Like I said, just start out with your week, you know, get a journal and talk about how certain things make you feel. Did anything, you know, stand out? Were you happy about certain things? Like it's easy to, I mean, not easy, but it's, um, it's nice to kind of start out with just going through the different emotions, list off different emotions, happy, angry, sad, you know, jealousy, things like that. And then go through and write down different times throughout the week that you felt those specific emotions. And if you notice, oh, why did I feel jealous about that? Like, okay, let's, let's look into that now. Like now we can look a bit deeper into that. So I think it's, um, and that's just something that I, you know, I do, I sit at my altar sometimes I'll pull a card and then I'm like, okay, let's do that. And then even just to like, not even just to reflect on the past, doing it in the present, which can be a little much sometimes, but like when you notice in the moment, like, oh, I'm really angry about this right now, but I know I'm not going to be angry about it in an hour, but I'm still reacting this way. Like having to go through those motions while also being angry with like someone else or something at the same time is like having two conversations at once because it's like, this is dictating how I'm going to address this situation further you know so just like paying plurality. attention to your emotional reactions is shadow work yeah and the plurality of having the two voices is exactly what we need as humans because mm -hmm. when you begin the meditation you start by watching you know watching the thoughts float by and I'm I'm, I'm only mm -hmm. speaking in more sort of like elementary terms because I do think a lot of people who are going to tune in will be interested in the beginnings, right? Mm -hmm. So to be able to watch yourself, that's that even just journaling, which I think a lot of people, again, think a lot about, they have a journal, they have a pen yeah. next to their <laughs> bed, but they just don't do it. It's so funny. Um, I had a clairvoyant reading about a month ago and I said, she's like, do you uh, meditate? And I said, no, for some reason, every time I go to do it, there's something in me that just like refuses. And she, and she's like, it's part of you that won't allow yourself to fully, you know, thrive. And there's, you have to just release mm -hmm. that voice. But, and nonetheless, I have been, and it's been great, but um, being able to have the plurality of what you just described of writing as you're thinking, as you're processing is mm -hmm. sort of the only way that we will become a better society. In my opinion, that we don't act on our anger when we see it, but we can see that we are being affected in a certain way. That's making our actions or rage a certain whatever. And I'm, you know, who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the rage that we've just seen lately. Um, mm -hmm. I'm outraged, but I, I've just seen this, you know, to be blunt, just this, you know, white male, rage and fragility that to me i believe truly in my heart if there was practice happening yeah of watching yourself and watching your thoughts and i'm not trying to go and fix anybody trust me i got enough shit to deal with myself, 
But I love the idea that sometimes this whole series could just be on the access of watching yourself and hearing yourself. Yes. I mean, we go through weeks. Think about, I mean, think, I truly, I'm so grateful for this time to slow down because there would be months of my life that I would work from dusk till dawn. And I'm a mom, mm -hmm. cook the dinner, put the baby to bed, go out, smoke a bowl, go to sleep, wake up, coffee. And it's like, I never even thought about what happened last. I didn't even know what happened last week. And so I feel yeah. like there's this time right now that has a, given us a chance to slow down. It has said, like, Mother Earth is like, I hate you for what you've done to me, but I'm gifting you with <laughs> this time to pause and to mm -hmm. reflect because otherwise, what is life if we're going to just speed our way through and hope for the best? So anyways, I just Absolutely. have to do that because I, I love this idea and it's so simple, yet it's something that we have clearly is so challenging, especially in America to pause, mm -hmm. to reflect, to wonder what it felt like. How did it make me feel? Um, yeah. And it's not easy to address those things about ourselves. always. It's not, it's not easy to say, oh, I get angry about things because I, you know, whatever. I don't like that you have this. I don't like that you said this and I've reacted this way. It's not simple to say there's this thing about me and it's not great and it should be fixed. So. Yeah. Yeah, because then that acknowledging means you've got to do the work afterwards. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I, um, I wanted to kind of, as we start to wrap up a little bit, I think that we were able to cover some of the topics that we had discussed, which is spirituality and daily practice. I love the idea of a satchel just as like, I mean, that is also to me brings like a childlike wonder back as well because it's yeah. like you've got your little special thing that you've hand selected that each has its own little meaning and you put it in your pocket and you know I have a four-year-old son and I think like I watch that childlike wonder with him with his one little favorite toy that is like so important mm -hmm. if it is lost it's like you know the full search is on in the whole house so <laughs> I like having this idea of like elements together and 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 the different ways that you've sort of shown us how spirituality can live in a daily practice um I love that you touched on um toxic positivity it's something that we also talked about previously and um the way that it's being sold mostly um because I think you know I know plenty of people in the industry of spirit um who are selling that and and i don't feel are authentic but then on the other end there are amazing humans again mostly women um who who are not selling it that way and it's it's a beautiful thing to see and that's really who i'm like holding on to for encouragement to come to the table for this because we have to look at our darknesses and also celebrate our lightness through all of this um so I appreciate that about what you said. Um, and then I think as we start to wrap up, I'd love to talk a little bit more about minerals. Like tell us like maybe minerals that matter right now or minerals that might help sort of heal from the chaos of the last four years or minerals that are gonna walk us into Aquarius and Pisces season as we sort of move forward. Um, just maybe we can touch on a few and you can talk about them if that's okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, I do always have like a set of five or six stones that I feel like are appropriate for each season. Um, Aquarius season definitely felt more, I don't know if it's because it's Aquarius, but just a lot more free flowing and just more um, taking each day as it comes, very staying in the present moment. Um, I do feel like red jasper is a really good right, good one. Oof, Jesus, sorry. I really feel like red jasper is a good one to have right now. Um, I like it because it definitely keeps you grounded, but it's also um, a gentle nudge of mindfulness. Um, it definitely invokes the let's work on this uh, at your pace, on your time. Mm -hmm. Definitely allowing you to slow down a little bit. Um, Aquarius season in general, aquamarine is a really good one to have. Um, just really good for keeping the lines of communication open, especially because on the 30th, 
I believe, the 29th or the 30th, the 30th, is um, when Mercury actually goes retrograde. We're in the shadow period right now. And personally, I dislike the shadow period more than the actual retrograde itself. So I'm prepared now. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, aquamarine is really good for gentle and open communication. We can definitely feel the need to express ourselves, but definitely um, kind of pushing our ideas on others, especially with the Leo full moon a few days before that. Um, so just kind of that reminder, like, yes, express yourself, but remember to let's listen to everyone else. Let's listen. Let's let everyone hold the totem pole and talk, you know? Um, I think my boyfriend's so... not in the room or he would be like, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I have a Leo Mercury and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And then, um, I think, you know, just some more, um, I really like to, I've been working with Lepidolite a little bit more the past few days. Um, I think it's also good for just dually Aquarius and Pisces season, just allowing us to, um, Lepidolite's really good for keeping you spiritually connected, keeping you connected with your higher self, mm -hmm. allowing you to have that um, clarity, that open-mindedness to receive those messages and those new ideas and to try new things, but also keeping you on this plane, keeping you mindful and aware at the same time yeah um not allowing us to you know float too high into the clouds especially with pisces season because we need to avoid the escapism if we're being That's honest me, baby. <laughs> i love to we love to see it right away <laughs> see we love that though it's a good time float I away know. have a nice time and then lastly um i always i always recommend the combination of selenite and black tourmaline or selenite and black kyanite. Um, those two together are just really great because black tourmaline and black kyanite are both great for um, repelling negative energy, but also um, cleansing, cleansing it out. So any, you know, leaks or, you know, tears, any unhealthy attachments, it's really good for allowing you to address them um, and then healthily release them. And then selenite comes in um, and kind of seals all of those tears and those holes and fills in those attached, those, you know, that emptiness from the unhealthy attachments. So they duly are just really good for keeping you spiritually grounded, also protected and, you know, just mindful. <laughs> so two questions on that. Why yeah. do you have them? Are you holding them and sort of like meditating with them on them through them are you just allowing them to be in your presence is it more about them just being on your body are you setting up sort of some type of place to have a moment with them like what does that look like for you personally yeah definitely so that also it comes into play with the satchel that i do every day um i'll usually keep one of those or a combination of those in the bag like throughout this time so right now um my bag always has selenite and black tourmaline in it currently but um along with some other stones i have the pytolite today mm -hmm. um so i'll do you know something like that i also do like to meditate with my stones um usually just around my area or within my on both of my hands, just because these are both uh, really great channels to utilize just to receive and give that energy. Um, when I do have the satchel, I either place it on my balcony as protection for my home, or if I'm going out, I'll take it with me. Yeah. Um, and then just working with them. If I, yeah, if I'm doing like a journaling or something like that, I'll usually keep one with me and allow it to kind of invoke different questions, different ideas and things. I love that. I would have never known any of those. So like I said, I am no, um, you know, seasoned vet with this, but as somebody who found none of us are, yeah, but I mean, you've, you've really spent a lot <laughs> of time, you know, devoted to this practice and I'm so grateful for your time to share and, and also to Thank learn. You. I mean, there's a little bit of selfishness in me, in me having a serious be around spirituality because I'm now diving in myself, but I know how many other people are feeling just like me where we've worked ourselves to the bone. We've had the toughest year and now we're ready to just release and we're ready mm -hmm. to, to find a place to spread more love because that's what we need right now. And I know I sound like a hippie, Absolutely. but fuck it. Um, 
My other question was, do you want to give a shout out to any little shops that you love? I mean, I'm in Southern California and so are you. Some of the other women we're interviewing are in like New York and there's there's different people from all over the country, but I would say probably like five, mm, four, maybe half of the women that, that'll be in the series are in Southern California. So um, if you don't want to, because it's your favorite secret, then that's totally fine. But are there some favorite places that you love to kind of shop for these items or places that you want to give a little love to? Yeah. Um, one of my favorite crystal shops is um, Art by Jack Studio. Okay. Jacqueline is one of the sweetest um, and, you know, well-versed crystal sellers that I have come into contact with. I think she's great. She does have an online shop and Instagram, all that, everything. So you can purchase from her anywhere. Um, and is and she then, supposed to have a physical brick and mortar as well? She doesn't. She doesn't. I know okay. she will one day, though. Absolutely. Okay. Um, as for physical brick and mortars, yeah, the Aquarius in me is going to say um, those are for me to know. <laughs> okay. I love it. That's totally fine. I love it. Love it. That's no problem. Well, as we wrap up, I just want to thank you so much. I mean, it's so incredible the way that the world is. I mean, I'm 10 years older than you. I'm almost 35. And to, to set know. an intention of desiring to learn more and create a series, then to search and search and search and then find and reach out and get the response of, yes, I would like to join you and talk to you and then to now actually do it. Um, it just feels so full circle and so rewarding and, um, it just feels great. So thank you so, so, so much for your time and for your energy and your resources and your wisdom. Um, I think people are going to find so much and get so much out of what you said. Um, and we'll be sure to absolutely promote where they can find you and learn from you and work with you. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was like amazing. I love I always love to discuss and expand on, you know, how we can better ourselves. So yeah, I always love to talk. <laughs> awesome. Well, hopefully when things are a little bit more in the clear, I can meet you in the middle and we can go get a cocktail. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lene, for your time. And once again, can you give everybody where they can find you? Yes, absolutely. Um, my Instagram and my Twitter are both Libra Moonstone. My website with my shop and my blog are LibraMoonstone.com. And my TikTok is Libra.Moonstone because somebody took Libra Moonstone. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again. Have a beautiful day and we'll talk to you yes. soon. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Right. Bye.